Hey, Lord the Ranger Welshman back again. Now, sorry for the fact that there's no intro, because, as the idiot that I am, I uh, accidentally deleted the folder that had the intro in and a few other bits and bobs in, so, uh, yeah. So I'm going to have to make that again another day. But i um, probably see if I can do something uh, better than that uh, when stuff goes on, but unfortunately I've got no money at the moment, so <laughs> nothing's really going to improve anytime soon. Now, you all know my opinions on Elio. Because I go back and forth with them on YouTube on comment section, which is hilarious. Um, you know, I'm sick and tired of the guy continuously asking for practical demonstrations, even though we've given him practical demonstrations um, on the laws of motion. But he seems to think that his crane operates outside current reality and operates within its own laws of physics somehow. And I'm also sick and tired of him calling everything from satellite images to um, photographs of the ISS as airfix models and every time you ask him to back up that claim of airfix models all you get is silence um, even though on the sort of concept of practical demonstrations what has he actually done practical demonstration wise on tower crane he's actually had done nothing and every time I ask him to um, say that, uh, to back up his claims of his tower crane and actually do practical demonstrations, and why have you done any? Or again, all I get is silence. And it's like every time he keeps on asking a question on his channel, about you know, it doesn't matter if it's asking about land mass or it doesn't matter you know what what he's looking at, or please explain this to me. Every time somebody does explain this to him or tells him what he's looking at, again, all you get is silence from him. So, again, he just loves to be in his little bubble and have his little, like that chap on his channel, flat, what was it, flathead something something, that moronic individual that keeps on copy and pasting idiotic stuff. But hey, now, what I want to do for this video just quickly, this is just, because I don't want to put too much of these videos in, because some of these videos are incredible, and I urge you to go and watch some of these ISS videos, because some of them are fantastic. What I want to do is, Elio, you seem to say you have good discernment, right? Couple over all this, and I want you to basically say, use your quote unquote hashtag discernment on these videos and even and like, try and even think about suggesting that these look fake because reasons, because demonstrable reality, my tower crane should blah blah blah. Alright, so here we go. This is a tour of the ISS. The second one is another tour of the ISS, which has no cuts in it, which is 50 minutes long. Alright, but these are going to be views from the copula. Now, I, I'm just, I just can't wait to see what sort of excuses you're going to bring out for this. It's one of those places you find yourself hanging out in all the time because all you want to do is look back at our planet. I think some questions I had were about what do you do in your free time? And you can't help but want to just come to the cupola. Oh, yeah, and I already know what they're going to say about her hair. So, um, yeah, that's been uh, something that I put to rest so many, many times. And, and look outside as much as you can. And a lot of folks... I, I play this game with myself about where we're flying over the earth. I try to come in here and just guess. After being here for a little while, you can sort of figure it out. You can tell different cloud types over different continents. You can tell different soil types over different continents. So let's see. And then, of course, there's a lot of ocean. So usually we're over the ocean at first glance. I will tell you in just a moment where we are. There we go. So right now we are right over Africa. It's a little bit cloudy, as you can tell, but we're right over the continent of Africa. Hey, what's that? I think that's a Soyuz spacecraft. That's the spacecraft that's taken us home to planet Earth today. Oh my gosh. We might have to go take a look at that. That's pretty cool. It's a little bit smaller than the rest of uh, the spacecraft, the space station, so you'll see um, if we go there, it will be a little bit more crammed. But we're going, you can look all the way back to the back of the spacecraft, which is where the Russian segment is. And then you can look all the way forward to uh, the front of the spacecraft, where the, uh, where the Japanese laboratory, the European laboratory, and the American laboratory are. And then back to the solar arrays, where we started in the, this morning when we were looking out the Japanese window.
Right, so there we go. That's enough of that one. Don't want to uh, play too much. Again, I urge you to go and watch this uh, video. It's an old one, 2016. Um, I think there are other ones as well. Like I said, I, I'd love to hear your excuses for this one, Elio. Is this an AFX model still? Huh? Okay. Well, how about this one? Come on in. Straight out of the way. There you go. You see we have full of cameras up here. And of course, robotic workstation, just like in the lab. And there's a beautiful earth. So we can hang out. You see the arm? I don't know if you can see the arm there. It's set up. It's on the top, or sorry, on the bottom of node two. It's connected to it right there. And that's the position that we use to grapple the cargo vehicles, SpaceX and Cygnus and HTV. And it goes in right on node two just a little bit forward of where it's where it's grappled to note two is where we birth those vehicles. And if you come right here then you can see to the right is the Japanese the gem which we'll go to shortly along with the exposed facility out there. That's part of the Japanese motor too when we have experiments that are outside and we have a Japanese arm that can move those around and do uh, work on those. And you can see right now if a little bit more to the right you'll see actually a launcher that we've been launching small satellites off of right there, which is kind of cool. Uh, that's kind of nice, nice to watch those go by. If you go back to the left over here, you're going to see the PMM, which is a Soyuz because it says so on there. And it is a, uh, it's the one that uh, uh, 39S crew came up on. And then behind that is a Progress. And, uh, and that just took a Russian cargo vehicle. And as you go around, that's pretty much uh, what you can see out here. You got solar arrays, of course, on each side. If you go over this side all the way over, you can see the solar array on the port side. Here you kind of view what it is like from outside out here on the station. But this is the best part out here, though, is looking down at Earth. We try to do this as much as possible. Unfortunately, we don't get near as much time as we'd like. They make us do work. So there we are, that's another good one. So I'm going to leave it there just for a quick thing. So I'd love to hear his excuses for these. You know, and uh, again, he's brought out another heap of trash video about uh, Apollo 9. How it all definitely looks fake. That he um, just wants to cling on to his um, special tower crane science than uh, actually admit that what he's looking at is real. And again, and I'm sick and tired of this, which I'm not doing another video because I've done like three videos on it about how the lunar module or the lunar lander looks purely because of the you know the foil and paper looking material which they seem to think that's what it's made out of even though you can tell them until you're blue in the face that that's just a thermal covering you know to um, sort of increase its um, thermal expenditure and how it radiates heat away but you know and I say like I said there's plenty of videos out there and um, photos you can find of the manufacturing process of the lunar module and what it's made of this entire list and everything so yeah they they need to go and look for that for themselves but yeah i can argue with him on comments all day long and he you know they all, everyone on his channel seems to come after me and act like complete smart asses and think that they've uh, they owned me it's like his latest his other latest one with um what was it a scramjet the um, he, he suggests that because the um curvature looks the same from 50,000 feet to 100,000 feet, or like, what was it, 300,000 feet, that, oh yeah, that proves absurdity, even though, depending on the angle of the lens and how much viewpoint you're getting, it does explain that we, you're probably going to get a minimal difference from 50,000 to 300,000. It's a probably there, but it's not that noticeable, especially at the probably viewpoint of the camera. And then, basically, because there's curvature, all flat earthers like to chime in and go well that's definitely angled you know lens distortion even though they would have no idea what camera was used what lens was used you know what's its field of view and all this kind of stuff and the fact that how much distortion is there if there actually even was any they just assume that because they're flat earthers that any curvature they see is all lens distortion you can see why i'm getting bored of all this flat earth stuff but you know it's videos like this that, you know, I'd love to go on the ISS. I really would. But unfortunately, it'll cost a fortune. I don't think they're, you know, to get me into shape. 
to get me trained will probably cost more than the actual ISS itself. So, <laughs> but there we go. So, hope everyone's keeping safe. Hope uh, no one spent too much money on Black Friday. And hope to see you all again. Good night.